All right, if you've arrived at this video, you might be having a problem with the divided by zero error. And what we're going to do, we're going to go over what causes it and how to fix it. So I've laid out just a couple of different small tables here. And I use these functions. They're all doing the same thing, but I just wanted to show you a few different ways that you can get the divided by zero error. So our first table right here is just doing simple division using the slash as an operator and it's just saying c6 divided by b6 and when you drag this formula down when you get to b7 so we'll just do it again it's already been done but it gives an error in row seven and it's giving you that error because it's trying to divide by zero so it's really a conceptually a pretty simple error it's doing eight divided by zero and you can't divide by zero so it's just returning an error so we'll talk about how to fix this but before we do the exact same data is here and here, and I'll just go to view and show formulas and show you this first table is just using what I would call a traditional way of doing the division the way you would typically see it is just with the slash, but you can also use the divide function. It's doing the exact same thing, but depending on how you're constructing your formula, it may make sense to use divide and also quotient and quotient just doesn't give you the remainder. So that does whole numbers. So let's go back to just showing the results and we'll talk about how to fix this. So you're at this video also, I'm assuming because you don't want to see divided by zero, it's ugly and it makes it look like there's a problem. So you can develop a way to handle this error where it gives you kind of a more useful message uh, instead of that error. So we'll just delete this formula in D7 and we'll make a new one. What we're going to do is we're going to use the if error function and what you need to do is give this another function it will check to see if it's an error and if it is it'll do one thing if not it'll do another so the if error tells you uh, it's waiting for the value so this would be the value that it checks to see if there is an error so that's going to be c7 divided by b7 and now you do a comma and it's saying value if error so if there's something wrong with it Let's just say, please enter a value in column B. So instead of just saying there's something wrong, this message is telling the user what to do to fix it. And then close it off because if there is no error, we'll just go ahead and run the function. So when I hit enter, there we go. Please enter a value in column B. I guess we need to fit this column a little bit better. There we go. So we'll copy this formula, we'll put it in D6 where I know it worked. So it won't put the message in there on how to fix it. And we'll copy it into 892. That same technique would work with divide and quotient. So there's no need to show you the same thing again. And we'll just move on to a bit more of a complex formula. And the point of this one is to show you how to find where the zero is coming from. So if I double click in this, I just made it a little bit more is going on here, but I constructed it so it would still try to divide by zero. And if you come in here and say, well, where is the zero coming from? I, you know, I know all of these have values. So what you can do, you can hold your left mouse button and select certain parts of the formula. And then the little blue text that pops up right above it is going to tell you what the result is. So this is integer zero, this is coming up as one. Let's highlight this part. And there's where your zero is. So if you take zero times one, it's still zero. As shown by that. And so what you need to do is address this part of your formula that's coming up with a zero and then you'll be fine. And now let's talk about a real simple way to get a little calendar to pop up when you double click in a cell. See you in that next video.